Hi, my name is Sarah Neal, and for my skill brief, I will be discussing the importance of feedback, specifically ways that we can improve our skills when giving feedback. I will be talking a little bit about my personal experience in the context of my job, um, not so much of academia, um, but for the articles that I read, um, of the four of them, three heavily focused on the dynamic between fe for feedback between an educator and a student, um, and the other one was more in general information. So personal experience with feedback, um, again tapping into my job, has been with the U.S. Air Force. So the Air Force's stance on feedback is that supervisors and supervisees will meet every six months. Um, starting with their initial feedback and then having midterm feedback every six months uh, post. This is a lot more structured um, and you are being graded on specific areas to include your job knowledge, um, your leadership skills, communication skills, etc. And your rated on a scale from does not meet to clearly exceeds. Although this feedback can be looked at, um, you know, you take your past performance or your past feedback form and you bring it to your, your new uh, feedback to t discuss ways that you've grown or ways that you've improved. This all depends largely on the supervisor, how they want to conduct this feedback within the confines of the Airman Comprehensive Assessment, which is the, actual, the name of the form. And then once a year, we have our performance reports, which may or may not align with what was given on the midterm feedback. So there's a lot, and you get a lot of up in the airness, I guess I will say, uh, when it comes to uh, how supervisors give feedback, and there isn't a one way that the Air Force has said. You besides the form that they said you will get this feedback. But I think the most important thing when it comes to feedback is providing quality feedback. And ways that the articles have talked about is um, addressing the primary concerns. So the primary concerns were annotated um, in an article that I read, one of the four articles, was timely feedback, usefulness of said feedback, and then the lack of understanding from those receiving feedback to those um, getting feedback. So people weren't understanding the feedback they were receiving. They were understanding what they did wrong, um, how they could improve, et cetera. And then also ways that the feedback is positioned to that student or to that supervisee. You want to make sure that, um, as, as we all probably know, you, you want to balance negative and positive feedback. A really good example that I think everyone's been taught from an early age is sandwich it. You know, you give one compliment, you give negative feedback, and then you uh, give something positive. And although I do agree with that method, I think that there's a better art to it. Um, you want, want to go back to making sure that the person understands what they did wrong or how they could improve. So what are we discussing? Um, are we using the same vernacular while we're in this conversation? And is this useful to you? Is it useful to you to know that I prefer purple pens over blue pens when it comes to um, reading somebody's notes? Like, is that useful? Maybe, maybe it's not. You have to think about the context. Um, there is there's a lot of value with positive and negative feedback. Positive feedback, though, has been noted to have people continue coming back for either more feedback or um, in, in an educative setting. If, they, if a student continues to receive positive feedback, they're more likely to continue taking classes, continue along their way studying, um, whereas if they were just bombarded with negative feedback the whole time. I do think there's a way um, to utilize negative feedback and make it actionable, um, but that will be something we discuss here soon. Um, but as far as the impact goes, the whole purpose of getting giving feedback is that there's some sort of impact. Um, 
that this feedback has on the person and then therefore creates better results. Um, at least that's how I view it. And one of the ways that you can impact that person more during the time you're giving feedback is incorporating them into the learning process. So yes, grades are cool. Um, they give a good metric for someone to, to gauge how well they performed against the rubric, um, against the learning standard, but did they learn anything? What did they learn? How can you use this conversation to gauge where they're at and how you can move them forward? Part of the way you can kind of gauge this and, and get them along their way um, to bigger, better things is the three questions, driving feedback. So the three questions that were posed in another one of the articles is, where am I going? And this all came from the article, The Power of Feedback. So where am I going? How am I going? And what's next? So the where am I going is the attainment of goals. The how am I going is the performance goals. And what's coming next is you as a supervisor, as a teacher, as an educator are providing info for greater learning opportunities for that person. So, you know, hey, where are you going? These are the goals you have. Your goals are to turn in three papers, turn in uh, this briefing. How am I going is those performance goals. So, you know, in, in this one, you know, in the briefing, you need to speak for 10 to 15 minutes, etc. And then what's next is, hey, by doing this, these things, by doing all these uh, assignments, for, by doing all of these uh, tasks that I'm having you do, you're able to then access, you know, maybe it's a different education, um, higher, higher graduate degree, maybe it's uh, a different job at your work, something else. So that's where the next piece goes in. And then again, stomping on the po effects of positive and negative feedback. Definitely look at it through a holistic view. You don't want to shatter somebody, um, but constructive feedback, also known as negative feedback, is very important for people to understand what they're doing that may be incorrect and how they can grow. If I only um, praise the good, I never recognize the bad, somebody may not understand what is wrong, um, whereas someone might, but that kind of goes into knowing who you're talking to. And then we're going to go into actionable feedback. So what's next? What is something that you can give and that kind of goes into the critical feedback. So actionable, critical, um, this all came from one article and this, this also is very reminiscent of uh, critical, com I think the book was called Critical Conversations. I'm sorry, I don't have my notes open with this one. Um, but very reminiscent of that whole book. The I versus you is how do you focus your conversation? Is it all about what that person is doing wrong or can you phrase it in a way that you have this preference because your experience has shown you that um, you can get this other person to a higher level? You wanna create a space for clarity, make sure that they understand what is going on? They they have the option and the comfortability um, to make sure that you all are speaking the same language. Um, an example of this: I was having a midterm feedback with my supervisor, and the way he viewed structure was different how, than how I viewed structure. I thought he was talking uh, the organization, the structure of the organization, and what he was talking about was just. Uh, like timeliness and I was very confused by what he meant by structure um, so we were cross-talking we did not understand each other I had the space for the clarity to come up so I did and it then projected the conversation into a better place where we both understood each other you also want to keep track or not keep track but understand the impact of emotions if you are 
getting frustrated um, with this person, that may definitely impact. Uh, so that may impact your feedback with them in a negative way. Um, a, a way to kind of think about the impacts of emotion is to run through feedback, especially if it's more on the negative side, with somebody else, whether that's an HR, whether it's a friend um, at work. Uh, in the military, we don't have HR, so I would probably run it by one of my peers. Hey, does this make sense? Um, get a couple ears on what I'm saying and then move forward with having that scheduled feedback with somebody. And again, talking about those next steps. So those are the actionable items. So as you bring a feedback to a close, what are the takeaways? What are the big takeaways that that person can leave that feedback with and change? What is it that you expect for them to have improved upon? How is it that they can improve? So not just, hey, I need you to improve on your ability to try to think here, uh, improve upon your ability to write a thesis statement, for example. But if they don't know how to write a thesis statement, then, then you want to break that into smaller pieces. So having those next steps available. Uh, and yeah, that kind of wraps up this skills brief. I hope it was useful. These are the resources that